In this presentation, we're going to um, learn how to do a simple replicate two to the k experiment um, on a spreadsheet. So this will be slightly more uh, time intensive uh, than what we did in Minitab, but I think that as you, as we work through this example in Excel, you'll have a better idea of um, sort of the back calculations and how to actually go and do this stuff and what it actually means um, or what each step is that Minitab does for us. Um, so we have, um, similar to what we did in, in Minitab, we have an experiment where we have four different factors um, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to determine which factor um, increases a computer programming pro programmer's um, production. So the first factor is whether or not there's light in their cubicle. The second factor is um, whether or not they eat pizza. Um, again, whether or the size of their cubicle for the third factor. And the fourth factor is whether or not they have Mountain Dew. Now, if they have light in their cubicle, for example, then it's marked as a one. If, it, if they don't, then it's marked as a negative one. So you sort of see that these are kind of dichotomously coded um, as negative ones and ones, whether or not they have light or have pizza or cubicle, have a good cubicle size or Mountain Dew or not. And then we're measuring the experimental response, um, specifically using programmer production units or productivity units, which are here. And um, in order to test, you know, which factors um, increase our uh, programmer's production, first we need to determine um, or calculate the estimates of the factor effects. And then we need to go in and we need to calculate the interaction effects. So first we want to see, all right, are the different, which factors are impacting production? And then do these factors interact and do they impact production? So to calculate the factor effects, um, the, the first thing we're going to do is going to do um, or calculate the factors one at a time. And essentially what we do is we just multiply each factor by um, each variable response. So to do that, we're just going to um, do a factor effect. And we use the sum product command. And we're just going to use, click this array and the production. So we're essentially just going to multiply the, um, you know, whether or not they're exposed to light and what the production is. And then we have to normalize it to, or by a factor of eight. And the reason why it's a number, or it's a factor of eight, is that it depends on the number of factors and the number of replicates in this experiment. And this is a single replicate, and there are four factors. So, um, we know that a single replicate is a um, two to the k type of experiment where um, we're going to have, in, in this case, it's two to the k minus one, where k is our factors. So it's two to the three, which when you multiply out is equal to eight. So we do that and we get a factor effect of 0.25075. So now we're going to do this for the um, other factors. So similarly, we're going to spread these out, calculate these. Okay, 
So the next thing we need to do is we need to um, go in and then figure out what the interaction effects are. And so what we need to do is we need to create columns of the different interactions and then what we do is we multiply the different factors by each other and then um, again by the PPU and we can use that sum product command again. So let's do that. And there are our effects. So um, in this video we will not look at um, third order or fourth interactions. And by third order interaction I mean um, let's say interactions between three factors so A, B, and C. Um, and obviously uh, fourth order would be you know an interaction between all four of these factors. Um, and basically I'm assuming within this example that only second order are significant. So to determine which factors are significant, um, what we need to do is create a normal probability plot and see which ones significantly fall from that line. So if you remember in our normal probability plots, um, if all of our data points end up on a straight line, then we know that it's a it's a that our our data points are um, you know sort of normally distributed. And so if let's say they don't fall on the line, that's kind of telling us that something is significantly different in the data. So um, to create a normal probability plot, what we're going to do is we're going to um, copy and paste. So we're going to paste special. We want values and we want it to be transposed. And we're going to move these values down. And this is our effect. And then we need to um, create a quantile. So we'll just oh, divide to 1 over 20. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, plot the effect versus the quanta. This. Um, before I'm going to do that, I need to sort this. And now I'm going to create a plot. And um, in this plot, you can see that most of these points do actually fall on this nice little straight line. But we have three things that um, stick out like a sore thumb. And um, these three things are the, um, the factor B effect, the factor D effect, and then also the interaction of B and D. So that's telling us that these are sort of significant um, and uh, we need to, you know, or that they are probably significant factors that are um, 
leading to um, our production or increased production. So um, now to figure out what these points are, I mean we can just click on them um, and I'm just going to add the da data labels and you can see that um, here you can click on these. This one is positive 1.64 and we see it here and then the negative or the 1.03 it's here and then this one here also is the other one and then we can go up and actually look where those effects are so here is the BD effect and this is the B effect and this is the D effect so the next thing we want to do is um, we actually want to create a linear regression model relating these three significant effects to um, our experimental responses, which again were the um, program or production units. So, so the linear regression model takes this form, and um, which we've seen before. Uh, this is y hat is equal to beta naught plus beta two x two. So the betas. Um, each represent the different factors that could be in effect, and in our case, it, it's beta 2 because it's our B factor, and it's beta 4 because it's our D factor, and then we have beta 2, 4, which is our interaction effect, so that's um, for our BD. And so we see that this is our, um, our line. So what we need to do is we need to figure out what these beta values are so that we can actually fully um, realize what this line is. So to calculate our beta values, our first value is beta 0 or beta naught, and it's just the average of our um, experimental response. For beta 2, it's equal to the factor effect, so the estimate effect divided by 2. For beta 4, it's equal to the factor effect for D divided by 2. And then for the interaction, beta, so beta 2, 4, it's equal to the interaction effect divided by 2. So you see that um, when we actually write out our linear equation, uh, we put in our beta naught, beta 2, beta 4, and beta 2, 4 values, and this is what the equation of our line looks like. So what we want to do after we've done this is we want to compute, well, is this actually a good model? So is this model actually replicating our um, the data in our experiment? So what we need to do is we need to calculate the model residuals and see if they are normally distributed. So to calculate the residuals, what we need to do is we need to go in and we need to calculate um, y hat. And then from that, we can calculate our residuals. So our y hat was that equation that we just used, or that, we, that, that linear equation that we just uh, wrote down. So it's equal to 20. Point five three zero times, um, or excuse me, plus three point seven eight one times b, which is our um, x two, plus four point six eight three times d, or our x four minus 5.792 times B times D. Press enter. Pull this all the way down. And then to calculate the residuals, the residuals are just um, the actual response minus our y hat value. Okay. 
So then what we want to do is we want to also put this in a normal probability plot to see if it is normally distributed. And so again, we have to go in and we have to compute the quantile. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort this. And then I'm going to compute my quantile. And I'm not really kind of talking this through since you should have already seen this. And now I'm going to go in and plot this. And you see that the residuals actually um, appear to fall on a straight line. And so it basically tells us that this is a good model um, and that it represents the relationship between the factors and the experimental response. So the last thing we want to do now is we want to do an interaction plot. And the purpose of the interaction plot is that it help us, helps us to see how to choose the factor values to maximize the experimental response value. So um, we know that there's an interaction between B and D that ha is significant, so we're going to do an interaction plot of B and D. So to do that, we actually have to create a table. So I'm going to move this over here, this over here, and we're going to create a table. And basically, in our table, we're going to set it up almost like a little mini matrix. Um, so you see that in my matrix I'm going to have four options and those are for the values where um, our experimental response values um, occur where the B value is negative one and D is negative one and um, you can see it for the different options. So we'll actually go in and compute that. And so for this, it's just the average of all the instances where the B value is negative one and the D value is negative one. So what we need to do is we need to go and look here and we see here and here that it's negative one and negative one. So here, here, and here. I think all the rest of them are not. So then again here, in this case, it's when the D value is negative one, but the B value is one. So here, 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 and here. And in this case, when the B value is negative one, but the D is one, And then the last one is when they're both one. All right, so now we're actually going to go in and um, plot this. So to plot this, I'm just going to select the data, do a line graph because it makes it easier to see. And you see two different things. Um, so our first series is um, our B factor. And um, you can see what's nice about, um, or what you can see in these interaction plots, is that um, you can see where these two sort of come together. And when there are no parallel lines, um, basically it tells us that the values of B and D need to be optimized um, in the experimental response um, 
that um, when you optimize them, they can't be done independently. So you have to do them together because they interact and because these two factors um, sort of work together. And, um, you know, just kind of looking at this interaction plot a little bit, you can see that, um, you know, yes, it, it seems that it would be optimal if we just gave them Mountain Dew because with Mountain Dew, um, Mountain Dew seems to, um, you know, lead to the most production, which you can see up here. Um, however, we also know that as soon as you add pizza into the equation, that it can sort of drop the impact a little bit. And so, um, you know, when we when we go in and we're trying to optimize our programmers, we need to take these things into consideration. So I hope you have a better idea now of how to conduct a single replicate um, 2 to the k experiment using a spreadsheet program. Thanks.